Hey guys, um, we were cleaning up around the shop here, getting ready for the user group meeting that's this Saturday, as a matter of fact, and I came across a lot of stuff that I just forgot that I've had stuffed in boxes and crates and stuff, and I started working on it without even shooting the video, and uh, I wish I would <laughs> would have remembered that every project I do, you know, we should do a video on it because it's pretty cool stuff. But anyway, um, I have several of these Amiga external floppy drives um, that I picked up from you know some lots of stuff that we bought uh, this was not too bad it's got some black goo on it we're gonna clean that off but this one it was assembled a little while ago it was really bad if you can get a shot of this you see how the paints kind of like bubbly maybe the top was just like that plus it had a lot of spots that had uh, rust and uh, so what I did was I, uh, I took it outside and sanded it down and put some paint on it. And I've already done that. But what I want to do is um, I'm going to show you the bottom, what I do real quick, and um, how it looks. And um, I know a lot of people say, oh, you know, that's no big deal, sand it and paint it. And I know that. It's not a big deal. I'm not saying it is a big deal. But, you know, some people don't get the opportunity to do this kind of stuff or even see this kind of stuff. So I like to share it with them. So uh, hold on a second. We'll be right back, and I'll show you what we okay, did. Okay, so here we are outside on my very dirty outside table here <laughs> and this is the top that i've repainted with just one coat so far it's pretty smooth i mean you know i'm not finished i'm gonna have to do several coats it's still kind of tacky but um you know this is what it started off looking like except worse it had rust spots on it so all i did i'm not going to bore you with all the details but i just took a uh you know regular hand sander that i've got for doing woodwork woodwork and stuff and i got like an an 80 grit paper and that's not too rough for this metal it's not going to leave any scratches in the metal and all i did was just go over it and i took it i took it all the way down to the metal and somebody's unplugged my here it is i'm just going to do it real quick and show you It. I just took it straight down to the metal all the way down and I'm gonna go ahead and sand the whole thing and I'll be right okay, back. Okay, so there you go. Got it all stripped down. Just did the outside and uh, I've wiped it down. You can use alcohol or some kind of, you know, cleaner for paint. And then I just got this uh, Rust-Oleum and it's seen its better days. I've used it and it's just an almond color. I mean, these external drives don't need to match up perfectly. But then uh, just hit it with a nice thin coat to start off with. Set it down like this. And there you go, that's your first coat. So uh, we'll let it dry good. And I'm gonna grab the uh, face plate for the disc drive and everything and uh, throw a little paint on it because it's in pretty bad shape. Okay, so here we got the disc drive, face plate, and the little uh, eject button and then the little cover that goes into the drive here. They're all in pretty bad shape. So I'm just gonna spray them real quick. Now the uh, Face plate has a little clear window. I've just put some tape over it. That's where the LED shines through, uh, activity LED. So uh, I'm just gonna spray this just like I did, real light. Then we'll go back over it. It's not gonna take much on this plastic to make it look, you know, pretty good. And yeah, there's other ways to do this. We could have, you know, retro bright or whatever, but this will work fine for this little disc drive. Now, the tricky part here, this is some high-tech stuff we're gonna try here. I'm gonna try to slip this paper right in behind the little flap. And get my fingers back a little bit. I'm just gonna hit it real easy. And there you go, it'll look like brand new now. And now we're gonna be real careful and get the eject button too, here we go. <laughs> yeah, I know. I can hear people cringing now. I mean, but, I mean, it's really, all we're trying to do is make it look decent. So, no need to get real technical into it. But, anyway, we're going to let this dry now. And, uh, 
put a couple more coats on it and we'll come back when we're all done okay while we're waiting on the paint to dry on the other one i figured i'd come back in here and try to clean the uh black sticky goo stuff off of here this is obviously the rubber feet off of another drive i don't know if there's some no nah, they've all fallen off of the bottom of this one but they set it on top of here and then they put it in the attic or something and that i mean it's just sticky as it can be and so we're gonna get um real redneck here and use my secret weapon for cleaning off that kind of stuff good old wd-40 and i've used i use this a good bit for cleaning off stuff like this you got to get it good and wet but you don't want it dripping everywhere so and we'll see how good it does i hadn't tried it on this kind of stuff yet so we'll see oh yeah look at that it's coming right off takes a little bit of scrubbing but See, that one came right off. Look at that. Pretty good. Now this stuff, we might have to really soak it to get it off. That's a lot thicker. So we're really gonna wet it down here. I've used this to remove tar and like roofing tar and all kind of stuff. So I know it works on all that kind of stuff, see? There you go. I mean, sure, there's probably other things that'll work, but I just happen to always have WD-40 around. My granddaddy swore by it. <laughs> we use it for everything. And then all you have to do to get the oily residue off is just, uh, you know, wipe it down with some alcohol or some really good cleaning solution and it'll come all the way off so there we go and as you can see it worked pretty good I don't know what that is it's different and this one is actually pretty nice it just needs that goo cleaned off of it but anyway I'll finish it up and we'll come back okay so we got the uh, black gooey stuff off pretty much and now we're gonna use our other secret cleaning weapon here it's 409. Get all that oil off and try to clean it up a little bit. Gotta really get in there. Oh yeah, there we go. And my son pointed out that that's some kind of scratch. Unfortunately. But it's not that bad, so. Get the face plate here. This one's actually going to look very decent when we get done. Does it work? I don't know. I should have tested it first, I guess. It's never been open. Look at that. Warranty steel. steel. <laughs> Seal is still on there. Obviously, this is uh, hasn't been used too terribly much. I think it's set around. That's pretty funny. It's got a China sticker, a German sticker, and then... I guess this is, uh, I can't tell where it says. Where does that say? Mm -hmm. Pretty cool. Yeah, pretty clean. I need some rubber feet to put on it. Okay, so that's enough of that. That's boring too. I'm gonna take it over here to this uh, Amiga and test it out, see if it works. All right, I'm back with this uh, external floppy drive for the Amiga, and I got it all painted, and it turned out really good. Um, I wish I would have got some video of how bad this this uh, top was, but it had some really bad uh, rust spots here and, and down through here, and the paint was peeling off of it, but I sanded it down just like I did the bottom that I showed you yesterday. And uh, yeah, it's been 24 hours. I had to let this uh, this paint really sit out there and dry good because it, you know, it'll feel tacky when you're trying to put it back together. But anyway, so we got the face pl uh, face pl plate <laughs> painted, and um, it looks really good. I, I think it's going to work fine. I'm fixing to uh, stick everything back in this case, and uh, we'll see how it goes from there. Okay, I got it all back together, and uh, looks pretty good. And I don't have any small rubber feet I'm all out right now but I've got these larger ones and we'll 
put a little tab of glue on there. And then we'll go over here and we'll test it out and make sure it's still working. It was working uh, before I did all the paint and everything. I tested it. It just looked bad, but it did work. And there we go. So now we're ready to go over here and uh, hook it up to the 1000 and see what it does. Okay, so we got it hooked up uh, to, the, to the Amiga here and we're gonna test it out. But I wanted you to see the color. You know, it does pretty good. These external uh, floppies, they, they range in color. I've got another one over here. And you can see it's, you know, it's not the same color either. It's actually pretty dang close to the one I painted. Uh, different style, you know. They were all over the place with these things. But anyway, let's um, let's fire it up and see if it'll even look at a disc. Make sure it's still working. It was. I had a disc that I know was working. What'd I do with it? There it is. There you go. And there it is, Dungeon Master. It read it. Uh, we'll click it and see if it'll let us do the readme here. I don't know if the disc works completely or not. Yeah, there you go. So it worked pretty good. But anyway, it's an easy way to, uh, uh, you know, refurbish a little external floppy drive. And it worked pretty good. You know, it didn't cost anything really to do it just a little bit of time and so now it's uh ready to go for a few more years hopefully you can find uh find it a home <laughs> all right